Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Growth, or the lack thereof, is back in focus as South Africa nudges towards another review by the ratings agencies towards the end of the year. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the prognosis. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. South Africa is still struggling to get back onto a firm growth footing. Yes, ever since the global financial crisis of 2008-2009, South Africa really has been underperforming on the, the growth front. It's coincided with a, 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 you know, we had a recovery in commodities post-2009, but then we have gone back into a slump. So it's really coincided with that commodity slump. And we saw that mining, or, um, you know, the contribution to the fall in GDP in the first quarter was largely attributed to the mining sector. We fell in the first quarter by 1.2%. There's hopes of some sort of uh, recovery in the second quarter. Uh, we saw the manufacturing stats coming out a bit stronger. But I don't think that anyone's really expecting the South African economy to grow anywhere near even now the 1% level. You know, in the, in the beginning of the year, um, government gave out a forecast of around above the 0.5% uh, growth between 0.5 and 1%. And that sort of stuck with us f uh, from a number of the, uh, the agencies that put out growth forecasts, including the IMF, for a few months. But uh, the latest IMF forecast came in at 0.1% growth for 2016, which basically means we're not growing as an economy. And if you look at our, our population growth, it means we're sort of really in a, a difficult n a negative uh, a trend. And we're also seeing it in the unemployment numbers now, that, uh, the, 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 that is, even on the narrow definition, we're seeing it ticking up well above the 25%. It's a chronic problem in South Africa. And the warning is that unless South Africa can grow again, um, all the different indices that uh, the rating agencies look at to measure whether we should be uh, an investment grade or sub-investment grade are going to come under pressure. And uh, we are facing another ratings review towards the end of the year, probably December, by some of the agencies. And we avoided junk in June, but there's, uh, there's still warnings that uh, we might not avoid junk in 2016. What are the likely implications of that on government balances and on the budgets? Well, that's, uh, that's going to be interesting in the, the medium-term budget policy statement. I think there's going to be a lot of interest in that. You know, obviously, if you're growing lower than you projected in your budget uh, plan and in your forecasts, are you expecting lower revenue? Uh, because the tax revenue is very much leveraged to, um, to growth. So we're going to have to see in October when the, uh, the next medium term budget policy statement is released, what the impact has been on the, the, the tax, the expected tax takings for 2016. And obviously if it's lower than what is uh, the, the sort of trillion rand sort of level that was projected, there's going to have to be adjustments uh, on, uh, on the uh, expenditure side because we know that one of the lines in the sand for the ratings agency and also for National Treasury in terms of our own credibility is to sustain this uh, fiscal consolidation path. Now for 2016 we allowed that to slip slightly uh, but there was a, a move by uh, Finance Minister Praveen Gordon in February to tighten that in the outer three years uh, and with gr uh, lower revenue intake you therefore have to look more and more at the expenditure side to sustain that fiscal balance. What actions could be taken and will this be enough to stave off a year in downgrade? Well, th we've seen this real effort since Praveen Gordon uh, uh, came back in post Nenegate of uh, December uh, to try and work with the, the, the main partners. It's really big business, big labor uh, that is sitting with big government. <laughs> And, and ironically discussing small business. But anyway, th th there's been this very uh, concerted effort to try and to come together to see how do we reignite growth. And we've, re we've really seen some of the actions that were announced pr prior to the June sort of d downgrade deadline. We saw uh, a small business fund that business is looking to uh, inject about 1.2 billion in, as well as to inject skills, uh, retired, professionals that will pr be prepared to mentor small business. And that fund is really about uh, uh, trying to boost entrepreneurship and help entrepreneurs, uh, even in this tough environment, try and get them to, to navigate it and survive uh, in this environment and for some new businesses uh, to also emerge. There's also th there's, there's a number of other initiatives that are being looked at to try and uh, stimulate business, stimulate growth. 
keep the infrastructure program going. Now, I have uh, questions about that because if you look at the big two spenders, um, both Transnet and Eskom, they've definitely pulled in their horns. So if you've got those two spe big spenders not really um, living up to the, the expectations, and there's, there's good reason for that. You know, you can't just spend as if uh, when the demand isn't there. But uh, the fact is that we're talking about uh, sort of a 380 billion rand program. It doesn't look like the two big contributors that are going to, in the next three years, meet their original, original projection. So are we really stimulating the economy through infrastructure? I have my doubts. We've got no private sector investment really coming into the economy. Foreign direct investment is, has tapered right off to a 10-year low last year. Uh, so that whole side of the, the uh, fixed uh, capital formation, that does definitely look weak. But there are these efforts, um, and uh, symbolic efforts in many ways, but now we need to start seeing those being actualized um, and being implemented, the Small Business Fund and some of the other in initiatives. There has been, I think, uh, serious attempts to try and stem what could have been higher job losses. I think people try and do everything they can in business to, to, to cut um, costs elsewhere before looking at jobs. But that can only, you know, you need growth, you need your businesses to be thriving. And I think there's, there's still this, this concern and we've got low confidence. So we need to s see signs that confidence is turning, um, some of the production is turning in mining and manufacturing, and we need to start seeing that some of these actions are being implemented up until December so that basically what the finance minister is looking for additional breathing space. So we've got the breathing space since June. He wants some additional breathing space. Now whether the ratings agencies are going to look hard at purely at the growth number and then therefore downgrade us, then if they do that, then I think if it's a hard look, then we're in real trouble in December. But if they, and I think there is a feeling, you know, you can't reignite growth overnight. It takes time. But if there's a feeling that the foundations are being laid and that they are credible foundations, then we may get another reprieve. But I think uh, there's a lot up in the air, and I think the medium-term budget policy statement is going to be very closely watched for any fiscal slippage and for any signs that we are actually starting to implement some of the action plans that have been spoken about in the first half of the year. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.